look at the stock of Zebra Technologies run. This longtime Kramer fave is a major player in the enterprise asset intelligence space. Think specialty printers, mobile computing, data capture, radio frequency identification, and real-time locating systems that help other businesses keep track of their inventory, their vehicles, and their employees. NFL teams even use their technology to pinpoint exactly where players are on the field. Zebra's been a fantastic performer, and I am proud to say, as our guest knows, that we've been behind it all the way. Today, the stock rallied another nearly $15, or close to 7%, after the company reported yet another blowout quarter. The company posted a 15 cent earnings beat off 328 basis. It inline sales, even better, management gave bullish guidance for the next quarter. So, can this stock keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with Anders Gustafsson. He's the always bankable CEO of Zebra Technologies to get a better read on the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Gustafsson, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you. Thank you. Anders, I don't know. It really came together this quarter, whether it be a gigantic 39,000 mobile computer to a grocer in this country, whether it be the health care orders overseas, yep. whether it be a recognition about just-in-time inventory and how, how, and how you can save and not have as many employees. It seemed to hit some – it's always been good, Anders. Yeah. But what happened? What's the tipping point here? Uh, yeah, we, I think we just executed very well. You know, we, we have been executing very well for, for some time. And uh, as a friend of mine used to say, you know, business is a complex team sport. Ooh, and uh, right. I think the kudos to the Zebra team for having been able to execute well for, for a long time. Now, at the same time, you've had to deal with, I mean, you're smack in the middle of the China trade problem. Yeah. You are pivoting quickly and getting your manufacturing out of China. How's that working? So far, so good. Yeah, we've already moved uh, all the products that were impacted by uh, list one, two, and three. Right. Uh, we're now in the middle of uh, moving our list four products out. But as a technology company, electronics company, you know, our supply chain has been very focused on China. And we're now moving to other Southeast Asian countries with our current partners and basically replicating our lines. So we will have more redundancy in the system going forward. Will the government say, wait a second, you are just literally taking the Chinese people's product and moving it somewhere else, and therefore you're not doing what, what uh, President Trump wants? No, I, we are very careful making sure that we get the proper certification that the country of origin becomes uh, real. So we, you know, we're sourcing the same components many times, right. but they're coming from outside of China. They don't go into China. I was with someone this weekend who sourced a billion dollars worth of product it was from China. I was trying to move it out, and the quality wasn't as good. Are you able to replicate that great quality that the Chinese have? Yeah, we fully expect so. So we were, you know, the, the partners that have been manufacturing our products today are the ones that are moving the same products to other countries in Southeast Asia. And they're going into existing facilities. So mm -hmm. uh, we think that this, you know, the startup uh, issue should be minimal, and we will have a lot of effort, a lot of uh, focus by our, our team from the U.S. and Asia, as well as our partners, to make sure that we stay on top of okay, that. Okay, now, at one point, you do actually call out the weakest area is China. Yeah. Now, uh, is that going down the road to hurt your performance, or are the other areas doing so well that we don't have to worry? Well, this, this quarter, uh, China was down uh, uh, double digits. It's pretty amazing, isn't yeah, it? It's been and yet you great... still blew the numbers away. Yeah, so in, in, and China has been a great performer for us yeah. over a long period of time, right? And, and uh, the weakness we saw in, in Asia was exclusively attributable to, to China. Right. So if, if, uh, if you exclude China, we had great growth in the rest of Asia. Well, let's talk about the biggest con uh, contract out there. You won the U.S. Postal Service contract. Yep. Isn't that gigantic? That is a large contract. So it's, you know, we're very proud of, of the, the trust that the USPS has placed on us to be able to supply this. This is the biggest contract in the history of the company. And they, you know, they're looking to now uh, great, create greater visibility and, and better execution ar around their, their parcel delivery network. Now, they do have, I don't know if people realize, but they, all the big retailers yeah. use them for e-commerce. Sure. Yeah, they're, uh, they're a very large e-commerce delivery uh, service. Right. And, you know, they, they have a, a huge network of, of letter carriers. And, you know, we will instrument them with, with the new technology that will be, enable them to have better productivity and a better service. You said to me that healthcare would be huge. It looks like the Europeans are really starting to adopt it. Why are they being so aggressive? But the, yeah, healthcare has been our fastest growing vertical for the right. last several years. It was our fastest growing vertical in, in Q3. Uh, we've seen it, it you know, growing um, to become much more of a global opportunity. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, Latin America was a strong quarter for, had a strong quarter with, with healthcare also. But Europe has been strong, and, and a lot of that is uh, regulation. Uh, so in Europe, it's a more centralized healthcare system, and often they come out with regulation that, that kind of governs a, a, a whole country or so. 
All right, now let's just talk about this grocer. I know you don't ma- name the grocer, but 39,000 of our TC52 mobile computers. Is that, uh, t- t- is that wanding? What is that? No, so that, <clears throat> they can do that also. But, right. Um, but it, it's, um, first, maybe, you know, in health, in, in retail, uh, you know, the, the industry has transformed over the last few years. We're right. trying to, you know, invest heavily in uh, technology to enable omni-channel uh, capabilities, improve right. the, the uh, front of store or customer experience. So our, our type of solutions are helping uh, retailers do just that. You can't really do buy online, pick up in store without uh, leveraging our type of technology. And this grocer is looking to do the same. So it's, it's helping to dri- drive omni-channel capabilities, improve the customer experience. Well, I mean, just, you cannot do it without Zebra. You cannot but, do it. Without type of, uh, right, if but there, you, we have but you really don't have, well, but your competitors, frankly, are, are really not in your, in your, they're not in your league. We've been doing well, but, you know, so we, we, we have a very solid market share in, in retail. See, I think you're only competitors yourself. Yeah. That's how I look at it, because yeah. I do a lot of work. I mean, I look, I was going by the old simple technology yeah. building on yeah. the LIE the other day, and I said, you guys own it. And you yeah. just you compete against yourself to, to up your game constantly. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. All right. Well, yeah. congratulations yep. on just an Thank amazing you. work. Guys, look at this stock. And we're not going away from it at all. That's Anders Gustafsson. He is the CEO of Zebra Technologies. When this stock goes, it really goes.